I don't, I, how many times I have to tell you? Sorry. Dimitri, what's up? All right. Dimitri dropped out. J Boogie, what's up? J Boog. I'm you. Hey, how's it going, Jay? What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to engage with you on Protestant Sorceriology, if you were willing to. Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to see what the issue was with the um, doctrine of imputation, seeing it is clearly taught throughout the Epistle of Romans. And I would be happy to walk you through it if you have time. Well, the Protestant view of what's imputed, could, can you can you hold on a second to kids in the background so the protestant view of imputation trades on it being primarily something that's nominalistic that's based on the nominalist view of what these terms mean and signify so if you beam by imputation an actual power that's the orthodox view not a pure legal standing so you could never have the protestant view of luther and calvin had we not had gabriel bile and medieval nominalism first so all of your readings are going to presuppose that division between name and reality or the purely nominalistic view that underlies Luther and Calvin's doctrine of purely legal imputation. Well, one, one sec, because in Romans it says that um, faith was imputed to Abraham as righteousness the same way that it is imputed to us. Sure. And if you go back to Genesis... When was that faith, uh, uh, righteousness, credit to Abraham? Yeah, it it's not Genesis twelve, right? When he when he believed God, hold on, and he was cre and he was credited righteousness. You're you're not so you we didn't. Have to be, we have to are be you precise. listening? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. So, you what did I just say? I said that how you interpret the imputation and what it refers to will be dependent on your presupposition. So you're assuming that it's a purely legal standard. So imputation means you're going to do work. The, the ancient, future. hold on. So in Genesis 12, that, if you're a Protestant, that should be his transition from wrath to grace. But when Paul says that in it was. no, it's not. Paul doesn't quote Genesis 12. He quotes Genesis 15 after he'd done three chapters of good works. So the very citation refutes you. No, but, but what you're failing to realize, and this is why we have to be specific with our terminology, imputation, if you read the Epistle of Romans, it's always talking about uh, imputation, a righteousness that is foreign to the, the, the receiver. Yeah, I believe that. So for, for it's, example, it does it. You don't have it in yourself. It well, comes well, from on. God. It's, it's the uncreated energy there, that comes from God. It's foreign to you. There, there is no uncreated energy in the Bible. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12 that the uncreated energia of the Spirit are what he doles out as his gifts. And he says in Thessalonians that the energia are at work in him as well as in Philippians. So it's in the Greek text. It's actually the uncreated energies. Right, right. But I, I don't want to run from Romans 4. You just said there's no energies in Scripture. It, yeah, uh, the, the the phrase uncreated energy. We, this is I, I just told you the un, the uncreated energy. Making things up. The uncreated. In. That's in Paul's letters. The uncreated the energia. I just cited Paul's letters to you. I'm not making anything up. Okay, can you show me the exact phrase uncreated energies in the Bible? The energia of the spirit. Do you think the spirit's a creature? No. So what are the so energies? What? So you don't even know that in Paul's epistles, it's energies. <laughs> I'm not talking about the energy. See, this is what I mean by you just said. Uh, there's no Catholics energies in scripture. You just they you just said from Romans four. Romans four cites Genesis fifteen, not Genesis twelve. So there's three chapters of Abraham doing good works, which you just ignored. So both of these points, you're wrong. Well, hang on, hang on. This is why I want to pin you down on this because this you're is not pinning clear. down anything when you just said that the energies aren't in Paul's. Well, well, are the are the energies? Don't repeat my name. Are the energies in Paul's epistles or not? The word energy is is besides the point of imputation. No, this is what you, I mean by you're running. You just I'm not running. I just addressed Romans four that it cites Genesis fifteen. Well, let me quote the passage. And then does it cite Genesis? It does it cite Genesis fifteen? Oh, that's not the again. Uh, yeah, yeah, not yeah, 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 
That's because, in your view, it should have been Genesis 12 that was cited because that would be the transition from wrath to grace. Well, here's here's the hammer to the nail. Here's the point I'm going to drive. You're not. Uh, so everything I say, you don't you ignore everything I'm oh, no, saying. I, I heard I heard what you said. You said so the energies good. don't exist in Scripture. They do. And you say it doesn't I matter. I never read the word uncreated energy anywhere. In my That's English. because Maybe it's in the it's Greek, in the Greek, dude. The Greek. Paul's epistles okay, use energia. Are, are you Greek? This is utterly stupid. What does me having to be Greek have to do with this? Uh, that's the dumbest promise I've ever read on here. To know what is the exceeding greatness of his inner gaia or power towards us who believe according to the working, the operation or energy of his power. I was made a minister according to the effectual energy of his power. From this is joined together every effectual inner gaia, energy, Ephesians, Ephesians, Philippians, that I might be fashioned according to the energy of his body his resurrected body philippians 3 whereunto i labor striving according to the energy by which he works in me paul says the energy of god works in me there's no such thing as created energies therefore it's uncreated energies buried with him in, in baptism to be risen through the faith in the energy of god colossians 2 12 even him who is coming is after the energy of satan so angels also have a created energy that is proper to them so there you go. Inner Gaia, operation, work. Multiple uses in the New Testament. It's also used for the working or the power, the gifting of 1 Corinthians of the Holy Spirit. So literally no idea what he's talking about. The Bible does not talk about uncreated energies and so it's something that you have made up. Made up? Like all of those verses? And I hope everybody caught the point that I was making about Romans. Because this is a really simple... I knew he was going to fall into this mistake, too. Because I know what it's like to be a Protestant. <laughs> I used to believe in the doctrine of imputation. So let's go to Romans 4, where it talks about Abraham being justified. And let's note, let's look and see where it talks about this occurring. Being fully convinced that what God had promised he was able to perform... And therefore, it was accounted to him as righteousness. Okay. But where does Paul cite? He doesn't cite Genesis 12. Now, why does this matter? Because in the Roman, or excuse me, in the uh, Protestant doctrine of justification, Abraham first believes and is the friend of God in Genesis 12. Right? So we have 12. 13, 14, 15. We have three chapters of Abraham believing and doing good works before the section that Paul cites in Genesis 15. Now, if Paul believed in justification by faith alone and he was a good Calvinist Protestant or classical Protestant, then he would have knowingly cited Genesis 12 as the transition from wrath to grace. Okay, if you're a Protestant, a classical Protestant, you should know what the transition from wrath to grace is. This is a very strict doctrine. So either Paul messed up by citing Genesis 15, or Paul doesn't teach your dumb doctrine. Very simple argument. Hopefully people can follow that. 